Boom! Yes, folks, see me again. How are you going? So, welcome to yet another video in our continuing series where we advance and we make our way through the CSEC ADMAT syllabus. In this video, we will talk about the equation of a circle. And the nice thing about how I treated with the equation of a circle in my website here is that I was able to find a really, really, really good video on YouTube that explain how you derive the equation of a circle, the standard form of the equation of a circle. The guy would have been talking about it, narrating it, and you have the diagram, and you're seeing the points changing and all that. It's really, 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 really good. And it was so good, in fact, that I said, look, I don't need to make a whole video to say this over. I give you the video in the platform. So I give you the YouTube link, and I also would have downloaded the video itself from YouTube and uploaded it um, separately on the website as well. So at this point, having gotten here, the expectation is that you would have gone through that particular video first, just to get a clear sense of understanding where this equation of a circle comes from. And once we understand that, then we could move a little further in terms of discussing the two forms of the equation of a circle, the standard form and the general form. So by this point, you would have been able to recognize the radius and the center of an equation given the standard form and also Given the standard form of the equation of a circle, you'll be able to state what the radius is and what, the, what are the coordinates of the center. All right, so I'll just run through a couple of quick examples. So we know for starters that the standard form of the equation of a circle is x minus p squared plus y minus q, all to be squared, is equal to r squared, all right, where the center is p comma q and the radius is r, all right. General, this is the standard form, all right, so we start in with the standard form and then we'll go out into the general form. So with this form, if you see an equation looking like this, you could figure out pretty much what the radius is. Um, I wouldn't go into that now. You would have had enough examples prior to this video to kind of work your way through that, right? Both getting the equation and then finding the radius and the center. Or given the radius and the center, you could then write out the equation in the standard form. So in this video, what I will do is I will examine the relationship between the standard form and the general form. That is one of the things that you must be aware of when you're dealing with the equation of a circle and all problems that, 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 that have to do with it. So in other words, you have to be able to switch from standard to general and you have to be able to switch from general to standard. So that is basically what we will be covering in this particular video. So we're going to start by dividing the board itself into two segments, right? And that's, this is the advantage of having a nice wide board. You could divide it and do two separate things at the same time. So let me see. This looking halfish. Yeah, we could take this coming down. So on the one hand, yeah, the line kind of wavy there, but you know what I mean, right? So on the one side, you have the standard form of the equation of a circle. So we have, again, for the record, x minus p squared plus y minus q squared is equal to r squared. Now, of course, in different books, different videos, different exams or whatever, you'll have different letters. So in some cases, they use a and b. In some cases, they use f and g. It really doesn't matter what the letter is once you understand the concept. Remembering, of course, that the center, the center is P, P comma Q, and the radius 
is R. Now, we're going to move from the standard form to the general form. So, what I would suggest where the equation of the circle is concerned is that you start from this form. This is pretty straightforward, very straightforward. I would even go as far as to say it's, it's simple. All right? You start from here and you work out. So, in other words, if we start with the standard form of the equation of a straight line, what do we have to do to get to the general form of the equation of a straight line? So, we multiply. So, you expand this out, you expand this out, and then you just do the algebra afterwards. That is, that is basically it. So, to get from standard to general, you just expand and carry out the algebra. So, in this case, x minus p to be squared will be x squared minus 2px uh, plus p squared. And y minus p to be squared will be plus y squared minus 2yq plus q squared. You see we run out of space here now? All right, so we had to borrow some space here. Plus q squared. And all of this is equal to r squared. Now you notice I moved directly from here to here. I didn't expand x minus p by x minus p, as I would have mentioned before. We in ADMATS territory now. So if you're doing ADMATS, you expect it to be able to move from here to here in one shot, and from here to here in one shot. If at this stage of the game, you still have an issue with that, then you could go back to my mathematics platform, where I would have had a whole video dealing with special expansions, and that particular expansion is one of them. All right, so you see what's going on here. And this basically is what the general form of the equation of a straight line is. All we have to do now is you have x squared here and you have y squared here. So what we do, we bring them together. So we say x squared plus y squared, all right? You have minus 2px, minus 2px, minus 2yq, minus 2yq. Uh, we have anything else? We account for the x squared and the y squared. We account for this and we account for that. And you have p squared and q squared, all right? Plus p squared plus q squared is equal to r squared. And then, of course, you just bring the r squared across. So you'll now have that x squared plus y squared minus 2px uh, minus 2yq plus p squared plus q squared minus r squared is equal to zero. That is the general form of the equation of a straight line. So in other words, we could write the equation of a straight line as x squared plus y squared minus 2px minus 2yq plus p squared plus q squared minus r squared is equal to zero. And that's basically it. That is basically it. So in other words, you don't have to put yourself through the stress of remembering this. What I would suggest is to remember this. This is much easier to remember than this over here. If you could remember this, then you could just expand your way out and get the appropriate equation, and then you could derive whatever else you need to derive from here. So for example, <clears throat> we know we could see here that minus 2, in other words, hold on, let me um, just clarify something here. Uh, let me change the color first now, right? Yeah, we have to watch the colors, you know. Right, so given <coughs> the, so in other words, if we have this equation here, we could do the following. We could say, that x squared 
Watch this carefully now, and I'm going to change the color just for emphasis. We could write um, x squared plus y squared minus 2px minus 2yq plus some constant that we call the constant k is equal to 0. Right? And we make this a capital K to reinforce the fact that this constant is, is basically some numbers here. So not just one number, is this constant is P squared plus Q squared minus R squared. That is what the constant is. So anything you have outside there is equal to some constant K. Once we do that, we know now that uh, the coefficient of x, whatever that is, so the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x, x is equal to, is equal to minus 2p, and the coefficient, the coefficient of x, right, and the coefficient of y is equal to minus 2q. And once we have this, we could then form an equation and get the coordinates of the center. All right? So um, let me see. The coefficient of x. Right. So OK. So again, let me do some maths now. So I'm going to come across on this side. Um, right, so I can rub this off now because you have this up here. Of course, you always have the option watching any video to rewind. So we can do rub off on this sign. All right. You rub off everything on this side. And we can see that, now watch carefully. <coughs> now we go in. Back from here, we're going back around. We're going to start with orange just to, just to make the thing flow consistently. So if I say, for the sake of argument, um, I can say let the coefficient of x equal some constant, common k, x, and I say let the coefficient of y equals some constant k, common k again, y. So in other words, we could write this expression in green as x squared uh, plus y squared um, plus, right? That would be plus plus some coefficient kx, the coefficient of x is 2p by x, right? Plus some coefficient y by y, plus some constant big K is equal to zero. No, I need to go back green here because we're not focusing on you right now, all right? plus big K is equal to zero. All right, um, I need to write this back in green. You in green, and I need to write you in green as well. All right, just to verify, just to highlight the point, the fact that we're focusing on the coefficient of X and the coefficient of Y. So remember we have this. So whatever the coefficient of, of x will be, will be equal to a minus 2p. And whatever the coefficient of y is, will be minus 2q. So therefore, we can say now, um, I'm sticking with the orange for now. All right? No, let me switch to red now. All right? So therefore, we can say that kx is equal to minus 2p. So P is equal to whatever the coefficient of X is over minus 2. Or we can say that P 
is equal to minus kx over 2. And the same thing would go for the y. So we could say that ky would be equal to minus 2q. So q is whatever the coefficient of ky is divided by minus 2. Or we could say that q is equal to minus the coefficient of y divided by 2. Yeah? So, with these relationships in hand, we now have a method where we could find the coordinates of the center of the circle given the general equation of the straight line. So once we have the general equation, now as you could see, getting the coordinates of the center is a little more tricky with the general form as opposed to the, sorry, if not there again, <laughs> as opposed to the standard form. With the standard form, as soon as you see the equation, you know immediately what the center is and you know immediately what the radius is. That is the, that is the ultimate advantage of the standard form over the general form. As soon as you see the equation, you know what the center is and you know what the radius is. With the general form, however, it is not that simple because you have to take into account all of these relationships, right? The coefficient of x is minus 2p, the coefficient of y, um, I need to write this over. So, all well, you have to bear with me here. This should actually be 2 minus 2q, y, all right? Just for the sake of consistency, all right? The coefficient of x, which is minus 2p over here, minus 2p, and the coefficient of y is minus 2q, all right? So if we treat those two as constants, which they actually are, all right, then we come across here and we say, let the coefficient of x be kx, common k, and let the coefficient of y be common ky. So we can write over the x, the, the, the equation of a straight line as x squared plus y squared plus coefficient kx of x plus coefficient ky of y plus big K, capital K, which is all of this over here. And with that in mind, boom, we do the algebra, boom, we do the algebra. So we know that P, which is the X coordinate of the center, is minus the coefficient of X divided by two. And Q, is, which is the Y coordinate of the center, is minus the coefficient of Y divided by two. So in other words, with the general equation, the, we could find the coordinates of the center by saying that the x coordinate is minus half the coefficient of x and the y coordinate is minus half the coefficient of y. The x coordinate, of course, being the x coordinate of the center and the y coordinate being the y coordinate of the center. So let me run that over again. When we have the general equation of the straight line, of the, <laughs> of the circle, sorry. When we have the general equation of the circle, we can say that we could find the coordinates of the center by saying that the coordinate of the center, the x coordinate of the center is minus a half the coefficient of x in this equation, and the y coordinate of the, cent of the center is the, is minus a half the coefficient of y in that equation. That is as straightforward as it is. Well, it's not as straightforward as with the standard form, but I trust that you would have been able to follow the algebra here to get the understanding so that when you start to do the questions, you will be okay with it. Now, some examining bodies would have the formula for the, the equation of the circle in the formula sheet. They'll give you the standard form as well as the general form. All right, they may or may not give you these relations. No, you wouldn't get this in our, stand, in, in our formula sheet. You would get this, and from this, you are expected now to be able to pull this either by memory or by going through the arithmetic as we would have done here if you need to to get the relevant information, all right? The nice thing, of course, is that if you do enough questions, 
this and all my statistic and you wouldn't have to worry too much about whether you remember it actually or not all right but as a general rule you shouldn't try to memorize this memorize the standard form and it could build out from that you do enough problems and enough things will start to stick and of course depending on 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 who you're doing the exam with you may or may not have the formula sheet but you had to, you had to figure out all them details long before the exam so that you could plan accordingly <clears throat> all right so we have dealt with finding the coordinates of the center from the general equation of a straight line now we have to deal with the question of finding the radius given the equation the general equation of a straight line so what i'm going to do is uh let me see i think i could leave this here i'm going to rub off here so again you have the option to erase sorry not to erase to rewind to follow yeah so i'm rubbing off here now and we going back all right we need to be specific now so x squared plus y squared minus 2px uh, minus 2qy plus k is equal to zero so remember with this here in blue is the general form of the equation but we chose to express all of this as one constant well simply because it's actually constants your, your p is a constant which is the x coordinate of the center your Q is also a constant, which is the, the Y coordinate of the center. And your R, which is the radius, is also a constant. So if these three quantities are constants, then the algebraic combination P squared plus Q squared minus R squared will be a constant. And that is why I could take the route of expressing all of this as one big K, which would then put me in a position now to find the radius. So if I see, um, we have red over here, we could go, mm, we could go black over here just to be, just to be absolutely sure. All right. Given that the constant K, in fact, I will, let me see where to put it, right? I'll have to shift the R anyhow you put it. What I did over here, I started with the coefficient, so I started with big K over here too. So I can see that big K is equal to P squared plus Q squared minus R squared. All right, whatever big K is, and we'll go through an example just now. So the R squared, we bring the, R, the minus R squared, we bring it across here. So R squared is equal to P squared plus Q squared minus K, whatever your K is. And your R, therefore, will be the square root of yeah the, the square root of p squared plus q squared plus minus k All right and that is your r so we could find the radius by looking at the value of the constant equating the constant to p squared plus q squared minus r squared and then using that to find the radius. So in other words, this right here is a key relationship when you're using the general form of the equation of a circle. So in the same way that we have over here, that the x coordinate of the center is minus a half of the coefficient of x. The y coordinate of the center is minus a half of the coefficient of y. Then by the same token, we have this relationship here, which is that the constant, whatever you have at the end of the equation, is equal to the x coordinate squared, the x coordinate of the center squared, plus the y coordinate of the center squared, minus the square of the radius. And you could use this relationship to actually derive the radius of the circle using a regular algebra. So I will stop here where this video is concerned. Basically, what we would have done in this video is demonstrated the movement from standard form to general form. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction where we start with the general form and we drift to the standard form. 
And after that, we'll work an example where we express the same circle using both uh, versions of the equation of a circle. So, as always, hope you're enjoying it. Stick around, we have plenty more coming your way.